Hi, my name is Malcolm Clark and I'm an English documentary filmmaker who has been living and working in China uh, for about seven years now. Because to me, what we in the West call the rise of China, I see as the renaissance of China. Arguably the biggest ongoing news story of the 21st century. Goodbye. It seems to me that China is the perfect place for a documentary filmmaker to hang his hat for a while. There. And then we hold this. He was six at the time. You can hold it in the length of Before arriving in China, I lived in London and New York and Los Angeles. World-class cosmopolitan cities built to welcome people from all over the world. And for centuries, Shanghai has performed precisely that role for China. A welcoming first port of call for foreigners eager to engage with and learn more about this extraordinary country. It's no different today. And that's why I chose to live here. And also because 40 years ago, Shanghai was the first place I visited when I arrived from the US to research a film about China. I was staying here at the Peace Hotel. Overlooking the Bund at a time when both looked very different to the splendid way they look today. One of the best things about the Bund is that it's the perfect place to illustrate China's extraordinary progress during the past 100 years. Look across the Huangpu River from the Pudong side and you see a magnificent corniche of colonial facades. Architecture built mainly by Western business interests during the early 20th century. But then if you turn through 180 degrees and gaze back at Pudong, you see modern China's very different, but no less imposing stamp on the city. World-class skyscrapers and an iconic skyline that's recognized now all over the world. It's often been said that if someone is eager to glimpse the future, they should journey to China, where in so many ways the future is now. No other country has achieved what China has achieved such a short span of time. with nearly 600 million people lifted out of poverty, with universal literacy and a burgeoning middle class, both Shanghai and China are barely recognizable. And all this was achieved in just 40 years. It's really astonishing. It's a pity that people in the West still know so little about where modern China came from and seem to misunderstand the fundamental drive behind these remarkable achievements. The Chinese people's desire to live the way people do in the rest of the world. They want a better, more productive life. And they'd like to leave their kids a safer future full of possibilities that could barely be imagined just a generation ago. And in today's China, all of that suddenly seems possible. As an Englishman, I know a little bit about the ups and downs of empires and superpowers. China will shape the 21st century. There's little doubt about that. We need to look no further than the way we're dealing with the COVID-19 crisis in the West. Our governments were too short-sighted or perhaps too arrogant to learn from China's experience. But after being quarantined three times in the last 12 months, I've come to appreciate the abundance of caution and swift responsiveness of the Chinese state. That first-hand experience has reassured me that this city is in good hands. We can all feel safe here. As the big new player on the world stage, 
China deserves to be better understood and respected. I hope to be able to make more films here, to show Western audiences the China that I see with my own eyes. I love Shanghai. Ala Weixi Sanghe.